welcome. <laughs> I think oh, it's a very happy day today. We have so uh, nice and happy faces here. This is so, so good for us all. Yes. So please, Cecilia, it's up to you now. <laughs> okay. Um, so before I start my presentation, just uh, so you see my face, <laughs> um, I'm Cecilia Oliveira Hillway. I usually just go by Hillway because people have trouble with the double uh, last name. So uh, um, that's what uh, some people get confused. But um, anyway, so I'm a maker and an artist and uh, an educator. So let me share my screen. Okay, so let me actually see what I'm sharing because, okay, there we go. Okay, so so um, I'm going to talk about uh, combining art and technology, and uh, but um, in order to do that, I'm going to talk about my background a bit because I did not start uh, my journey trying to be an educator. It was quite a happenstance. So anyway, I was born and raised in Mexico City, Mexico, and. Um, this is my family. We, they'll want like I'm sharing this photo, but uh, the, the little kid with the blonde hair, that's me. I'm the youngest out of five. Um, my parents, you know, wonderful parents, they, uh, they were both computer programmers and uh, did uh, systems like information and, and computing systems for different companies. They worked really hard, uh, but I was, you know, youngest set of five again so so money was tight but um, my parents always had this philosophy that um, education was the best thing they could ever give us so they they made sure that uh, we went to the best schools they could barely afford and um, they gave us access to things like uh, tv in english and uh, you know if i wanted a book in english they're like yes please <laughs> um, they, they wanted to to make sure our future uh, went well, which worked out for all of my siblings and myself. And um, so, they, as computer programmers, they tried teaching me how to program. But honestly, I didn't like it much. It, it was too boring. It was too abstract. Too. Um, um, you know, kind of dry. So what I like to do on the computer was draw. And um, like I said, money was tight. So we had a very old computer, even by the standards of the time, it was very old. So all these drawings were just with the keyboard. I couldn't even have, uh, I didn't even have a mouse. So it was just with the keyboard and I was a bit of a tomboy. So GI Joe and stuff like that. That, that was my thing, right? Um, so growing up, drawing was has always been my passion, drawing, um, sketching, like I have tons of things like that. So so as I, I, as I got older, um, I had to decide on a career, right? What am I going to study? And uh, But the only thing I knew I liked was drawing. So my family was very concerned because in Mexico, illustration is not really a, a career, a viable career, because in Mexico, they don't really um, produce a lot of books, illustrated books. You have to work for, for other uh, international companies. But anyway, I digress. Um, so uh, they told me, why don't you study graphic design? Because it has more options, right? So I studied graphic design. Um, I found that I am not very passionate about typography. I couldn't care less about uh, layouts. I do not like making logos. So any assignment that they gave me, I just tried to sneak in drawings to them uh, because that's what I, I liked, right? Uh, but what I did learn, and, and I guess my parents were right in this regard uh, with graphic design, the software. Uh, I. I found that I was very uh, good with the software and uh, I, my classmates even paid me to make uh, stuff for them. Um, so at the very last uh, year of, of uh, being uh, studying graphic design, I had a lot of uh, free time. So I was playing video games online and uh, 
then the summer that I graduated, my brother was like, oh, uh, um, he was living in San Francisco at the time, my oldest brother. So he's like, why don't you come and visit? And so I did. And it turns out uh, one of my friends from playing online became uh, my husband and he is from the USA. So I moved to the USA. Um, it, so now I'm living in California, right? I'm like, okay, so this is great. I dislike graphic design, but I, I need to under, like have a career. So I'm, I'm trying to figure things out. And my mother-in-law told me, why don't you in the meantime, try to be a teacher's assistant? So she worked at a school, she's a teacher. Um, so at, at the school she uh, worked at, they, they always have openings for teacher's assistants. So I'm like, sure, why not? Um, so I found that I really enjoy working with kids. Um, this little silly drawing is uh, um, kids would give me prompts uh, to draw. It's like, okay, so I had want a muffin lion being written by a, like an apple and myself as a superhero, uh, like the kid who's asking. And then, so, so they would just keep doing and these things. And there's something about uh, children that I, my experience is mainly uh, elementary school, by the way. So it's uh, about six years old, uh, all the way through 14. That's usually my experience. So sorry about if you're interested in high school, that's not what I do. Um, so anyway, so so I found that I really enjoyed working with, uh, with students, um, but I didn't want to teach. I like supporting teachers. I never intended to be a teacher myself, right? So um, while uh, at the same school, I ended up going to IT support and um, which, you know, it worked great because I'm good with computers, uh, but uh, they, had an, uh, they, they had an open call for after school teaching because they wanted more after school teachers. And I found that we had a software installed um, in, in, uh, at, this, at the school that wasn't being used, which was animation-ish. So like, I would, lo would have loved this as a kid. I, I want to make sure that the kids get these kinds of things. So um, this is just a little sample um, from the, that. Like I said, I did not set out to be a teacher. I was never interested in getting a teaching credential or starting to be a teacher. I just happened to see things that I would have loved as a kid and seeing that the, that the school uh, was not offering those things. So I'm like, I can do that, I guess. I, I can try. So then Scratch came along. Uh, and I was fascinated as, as a graphic designer I had used Flash before. So, and, and like I said, I tried some coding before, but was not in love with it. So this was perfect. It's like animation and it's coding and it's beautiful. And I fell in love with Scratch. Uh, so I, st I started teaching Scratch in after school settings. Um, so it, it, Scratch was really like the beginning of my maker journey. 
sorry, just silly clips. Uh, um, so for, uh, again, coding is not, coding for coding's sake is not my thing. So what I, I always found an excuse to uh, combine art. So I would have like little drawings and animations and, um, the, this was a sample because a sixth grade was uh, learning about the Hobbit. So I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll have like a little Hobbit thing. But um, like I said, um, it's one of the, those things where to me it's just an excuse to be silly. So, so I just like uh, uh, playing around with art and technology. And, and uh, I found that students really respond to that. Um, so, okay, so then I, I uh, my husband got a job in Los Angeles, so we moved to, to LA and uh, I started working at a different school. This is um, a portrait I made of my boss at the time, Adrian Caulfield, uh, who wonderful, wonderful person. She introduced me to a, a whole lot of things um, because she was interested in starting a makerspace at the school. So, so she's like, Let's learn together about all these things. We had we took a class on Coursera from the Tinkering Studio. I really recommend it. You should try it. Um, and, and we we tried, like I said, learning together different things. And um, I found this thing online web because I, I was really uh, researching on everything maker, and I found the Hummingbird Kids, which that like let you do robotics and they were programmed in scratch at the time so i was like wow this this is like perfect because i had tried arduino and all those things and they, they just hadn't really clicked with me so the hummingbird was well, like this this is great so um this is the first uh, robot i build the, i made it as a sample uh, for students because i wanted to learn before uh, teaching so First little guy. me like learning how to take videos too <laughs> my work it has a light sensor and a sound sensor like i said coding through scratch which i really uh it was perfect marriage um for me because it had uh, I, I could do something physical and with art and coding, but it was simple coding. I didn't have to learn a new language for uh, for it. Um, so based on my my uh, work, this is what students came up with. This is sixth grade. Again, this was the very first class that both Adrian and I had ever taught for robotics with a uh, hummingbird. So we were very excited. We ran out of time a lot, but we enjoyed it. And uh, we tried to um, link it to the curriculum. So this was uh, about uh, ancient civilizations in sixth grade. And uh, the the Hummingbirds could be wireless and coded on the iPad at the time. So that's what this is. I apologize, the video is a bit long. Um, the students uh, picked a cre uh, creature from mythology and they made their things. Mm -hmm. 
We found that some students were really into it uh, and uh, some not so much. I'm gonna just skip to the end here because it's a long video. Oh, come on, okay. Uh, we also tried uh, just with solar. So um, with so solar uh, vibrobots, so this was also combining art and technology and the kids got to to do their little craters and we just added the solar panels we explained how solar panels worked um, so and then they got to test them out it, it, it was just you know for for me uh very rewarding because i Again, um, I always go through like, I would have loved this as a kid. So this is why I do things. Um, and uh, then I moved to a, a different school because uh, it was Los Angeles and I needed something closer to home because it was just too hectic in right? Los Angeles. So then I worked with Dr. Patterson who introduced me to a whole other uh, world of making because he was really interested in um, puppet making. And uh, so a lot of what we worked at the Makerspace was um, integrating performance and uh, videos with, um, with, with um, maker ideas. So this is a, a silly sample we made. It doesn't have video, but uh, so the, the project was for sixth graders to do uh, um, a news report on Egypt. And this is just a, a puppet that he had, but the students actually made their own puppets with their own uh, with their faces. So it was, uh, you know, it, it was very interesting. And it was, a, a, um, I was very fortunate to have both the experiences with, um, with Adrian Caulfield and Dr. Patterson, because it was, um, completely separate personality styles and, and teaching styles. So uh, it was just fascinating. Um, at that uh, school, I also uh, helped uh, assisted teachers with um, curriculum integration uh, with technology. So we did a lot of animation because that's my uh, thing, but um, also Minecraft, uh, me, uh, um, escape rooms, uh, stuff like that. So, so I, I again, helped, uh, helped teachers out. And um, this is just a little a sample with first grade. Hi, my name is Teddy. Hi, my name is Ellie. Hi, my name is Greg. Hi, my name is Jeremy. 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 So really the point is just to have students enjoy the process because art makes learning technology a little easier, I think. Is that doing that? So uh, this time uh, we were also doing uh, toy take aparts and rebuilding. So this is the the first project I made with uh, once the the hummingbird was uh, with micro uh, had the micro bit um, access. So. It was just a little uh, a sample for kids. So like, okay, so you can combine the the things that you you know did. So it was one of my first uh, projects with them. Just again, a sample of uh, toy tape take apart and putting it back together. Um, so Dr. Patterson was uh, supportive of like 
again, he, he likes showing, uh, showcasing stuff. So he's the one who actually got me into Twitter and he, he suggested, why don't you do the mini maker fair? So this was um, the first time I showed uh, uh, my little creations in public. Uh, you can see that I didn't have that much, that many at the time, but so, so um, and this was like my first like maker outing. So then um, LA was great for uh, job opportunities, but honestly, it was driving me crazy. It's uh, kind of soul sucking. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up moving to the Pacific Northwest so we could have more nature, more access to just fresh air, calm, quiet. It, it was a big gamble, but uh, it worked. Um, so I, I started, this, this was the first robot that combined watercolor paintings, which I've uh, been working on for a long time with electronics. So um, this is a character from the Dark Crystal, um, which I, I just saw it. I'm like, I, I want to make my own sort of puppet. This was, uh, this was a huge step forward for me because I was combining more art uh, I, and um, you know, my illustration side with the electronic side. So, you know, for me, this was like a, a big step forward. And then something happened. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, you know, the 2020 happened and uh, then I went on a, a making spree, honestly. So, so I started making um, different robots and putting them all on Twitter. Um, my idea, even though I, I didn't have connections with people because I was in the middle of nowhere again, that, like if I shared my robots and I shared how to make them, people would connect with that and they could, again, I, I love working with teachers. So it's like, okay, so if I show this, maybe they can show their students. So that has always been like a goal for me because I don't think I'm particularly a good uh, teacher. I, I love what I make and I want to spread it, but again, I, I just had no interest in, in, in being a teacher. Uh, um, so, so for me, working with teachers is always amazing. Um, let's see, so this is a, a, another thing. Um, so I, I thought with the hummingbird, I'm thinking still with teachers, like if they made, um, they were talking about biomes and uh, stuff like that. They, they, each kid could make their own robot and, and uh, put it together. So I'm, 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 I, at this time, I was not working at a school anymore. I was working just at a library, but I'm still thinking if teachers see this, maybe they'll get inspired and they'll make this. Uh, uh, again, for me, uh, the pandemic was like, okay, I have to keep making things or I'll go crazy. So I just, kept uh, doing things. Um, so uh, at this point in, um, by putting my stuff on Twitter, I was actually contacted from a makerspace to teach there. I, I was aware that they existed, but I didn't think they did uh, children classes. So I was very surprised and I'm like, yes, I would love to do that. So th these are samples from uh, students from my uh, summer camp. Again, it's I, like I'm very interested in integrating technology and art. And uh, some students who wouldn't see themselves in robotics, I really respond to this because they're like, gosh, I, I like making cute little things. So I can just you know, try this. <laughs> I love this one. Here. Run out of time to actually glue it together, but it's so cute. Um, I I had um, I had kids uh, and and parents tell me, you know what? I, I I would have never even tried this because I'm more of an artsy uh, uh, student. So so with the technology, I like they didn't think that would be uh, something they would be interested in doing. But when you combine both art and technology to make something 
you know, uh, live. Um, I've also been teaching uh, video game making classes, which uh, can, I guess it ties a bit to Scratch uh, from my beginnings. Um, again, any excuse, uh, the top one is uh, our drawings of mine, uh, I just because I take any excuse to <laughs> make more drawings. Um, so, um, and uh, when students still ask me like, but how do I get that good? I always show them this photo. Um, this is a few years back. So I even have even more stuff now, uh, but I told them like, these are just sketches and drawings that I've done throughout my life. I didn't start drawing, you know, like, like you see now, I just really enjoyed it. So I kept doing it. So anyway, uh, let's stop sharing and I will now, um, And uh, yes, Maureen, that was Sam, Sam Patterson. <laughs> um, so I, I, I can take any questions, but uh, uh, in the meantime, I can show uh, some of my, my robots live. So let me say that like what the stuff you make is obviously amazing but it's amazing to also see what your students make like it's really clear that you're really inspiring them because the the creativity <laughs> of everything you've shared has just been really amazing like you know whatever when you're showing them your your work like some of that is clearly going on to them I don't know if you have any advice on to like what what seems to work to get them to be so creative or if it's enough to just show them like what you do well you know, it's it's funny because I think um, a lot of the times they get inspired <laughs> when they see how passionate you are. Uh, that's the thing. So, like, I always show them. Okay, I love making stuff. This is the things that you can make. <laughs> and, um, a lot of the times, uh, I make things that will respond to me, uh, like. I keep talking <clears throat> like graphic design, we call it. I'm my own target audience because I make things that, you know, that I like and the kids really respond to that. They respond to seeing, uh, you know, creativity and they're like, oh gosh, I could do something like that. And uh, also since it, I always, talk about art, I think I attract the students who are more into art. So they get better, they, they will teach their students. They can show these to students and inspire them because, you know, that's, I, I think that's my goal uh, to, to just have somebody else do it better, inspire the, the, uh, everyone else. So, all right, so, this little thing is my little avatar that I made. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I, I love lip syncing. I've done a lot of projects lip syncing. So the way this works, I have a little re remote controller with a, a micro bit that is, um, is responding to the sound of my voice. I'm making the servo change okay, so I can show you so if you see in the back there's a little servo that is responding to the volume of my voice so I'm gonna turn this off or I will drive me crazy <laughs> the uh, the mechanism that's in there is for the uh, the gear and the ratchet mm-hmm um, this? Yes. Is did you make that or purchase that? I actually purchased it because I was uh, looking for something exactly like that, and uh, it's it's uh, from Kitronic. Kitronic. Uh, um, and uh, I actually think I have one that is not open. Let me see mm -hmm. if I can show it. Uh -huh. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. I can can show you how it looks like. Um, 
Okay. So, uh, so they, they sell it. Um, it's a, a Kitronic kit uh, for linear servo. So okay. it, it comes with a tiny little servo and uh, the okay. things. So, so it does come with a servo. Okay. It's one of those things where, where I saw it and I immediately knew what I wanted to do with it. <laughs> um, I, I get those uh, uh, moments a lot. Mm. Like, this bear, I, I saw it being sold at Target and, and uh, I'm like, I want to do something with him. And at the time I didn't have the knowledge. Let me see if this will work. It's amazing. Okay. So this again has a, a <laughs> sound sensor. So he's again picking the sound of my voice. Um, he, he is endless hours of entertainment for me because uh, he's just, this is the kind of thing that I'm telling you about. It, I make things to amuse myself and they, uh, people respond well to it. So, right. This this was uh, sold as a mounted head uh, for t uh, uh, kids decor, which is kind of weird, but uh, for for uh, kids room. And I just like hollowed it out, added the the, the microcontroller, and uh, it has a, a piece a, a servo thing here. So anyway, this was what is by far one of my favorite projects because it's just too amusing. <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, I'll just keep showing you things unless you ask me for uh, something specific. Do you do you um, leave your creations assembled, or do you reuse uh, servo motors? At, you know, for other projects. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Do you leave all your projects assembled? Do you leave the electronics inside or do you reuse servo motors for other projects? Well, that, that's a good question. I actually don't, don't for the most part. Uh, I, I just have a few that I, I keep everything because um, uh, uh, some I've, I've, I've shown for uh, like at a museum and stuff. So I keep the electronics, but I, I um, like I have a bunch of, of robots that, that I can't show you right now just because they, they no longer work. They don't have a, the, the, uh, the microcontroller, uh, but um, right. I, I, if possible, I just let it leave the, the motors in so they can um, uh, at least uh, uh, like, like I can connect the microcontroller later and they still have the motors in. Um, so the, the price of them is just basically the servos. Right. Yeah. With my classes, because they, the, the materials rotate to the next class, mm -hmm. all of the electronics have to come out. So yeah. I found that if I wrap the servo motors with mat, with uh, duct tape and then let them hot glue in place on a block of wood, they're mm -hmm. held really securely. Mm -hmm. And that way the tape can be easily removed. I don't have hot glue residue on the servo motors, makes a significant difference. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely a thing. Uh, like, for example, the, the makerspace where I am, um, mm -hmm. like we have to tell the, the parents beforehand, like they, they won't be taking this home right. because uh, <laughs> like they're used to the makerspace where they just make their stuff and they take it home. Like that's not gonna happen, they can take, what they made but with minus the electronics so, right. so the 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 last day we have a showcase for the parents to see the, what they're made they take the videos and stuff and then we take them apart they take uh, um what they made but i keep all the electronics so um that's one way i found to keep the classes at the makerspace a little cheaper because mm -hmm. they don't have to purchase the electronics um which right uh, one of those things I, I uh, somehow always ended up uh, working at uh, schools with a lot of budget, but uh, I still think of 
little me wouldn't have been able to afford all this. So, so I, I keep, I, like I try to make sure like, okay, are they gonna have scholarships? Uh, are we gonna have um, you know, easier ways? I, I, I just started thinking like, I need to make projects where you don't use as many motors or you use as little, uh, you know, technology as possible, They're like they still work, but um, so I, I, I keep keep that in mind because uh, I, like I said, like, oh, I think like, oh, I, I would not have been able to afford this when I was a kid. <laughs> I would <laughs> still love this, but like I would really respond to it, but I would not have been able to afford it. So I tried to make um, uh, with the avatars, I have a version where it's just the micro bit, so it's not, it doesn't have the microcontroller, so, um, so yeah, I, I, I am trying to be mindful about that. Right, right. <clears throat> um, so let me see if there are any questions on the chat. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I did sh show the whale. Um, the oh. whale was an inspiration for one of my students. <laughs> it's amazing. It, 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 that was so much fun, and um, I, again, I try to make sure that I I share my process uh, uh, because you know it's one thing like like you suddenly see it and it's you know beautiful and stuff. But I I made a video I don't know if you, if you saw it where I, I show all the the bloopers where the no, whale keeps falling down. It keeps <laughs> you know just because I, I want to make it approachable like like it what I do looks so uh, uh, in the end, like for uh, for kids like, oh, this is a little too refined. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's my worry, like instead of inspiring them, I, I'll intimidate them, but I, I that's why I keep sharing what didn't work, the process that, you know, so 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 they know that, uh, that, that you know, you, you can do, things and it gets there slowly and you'll fail and fail again but you have to keep trying right. um uh kathy you were asking about the programming language uh scratch it doesn't work with uh, this anymore but it's a scratch like language mm -hmm. is a make code and uh, hummingbird also has a, a little app that is basically scratch um so so it's, it's still block coding I, I don't uh, I've, I've learned some uh, of the regular coding, but honestly, block coding is just so much easier for me because I, I, I'm a very visual person. So, and, and I know, know what makes sense to me, like the, the sentence, like when this, if this will happen, if then that makes perfect sense to me, but learning the syntax to code uh, um, typing, <laughs> just it's, I, I, it is like a, a stop for me. Like, oh, like I can't, I can't just go smoothly. <laughs> so it works for me and it works. Uh, uh, I found a, a lot of the students who, who are more into art and they, they don't care about learning all those coding things like typing, but they will like make an effort with the coding blocks if it'll make their creation come to life. So, um, so it, it, it uh, I think, um, again, combining art and technology uh, makes uh, projects approachable for kids who would otherwise not be uh, interested. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, um, I don't know if uh, anybody else has a question. Uh, yeah. how is yeah. showing the, uh, yes, yes, let's speak. <laughs> yeah, when you were showing the, uh, the bear in the corner of the screen that you had the um, the frog band. Mm -hmm. That was the inspiration for my circus trains that I started having my students do. <laughs> well, that, you know, it, 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 Jasmine, who's here, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've started a, a wonderful community online where there's like, uh, people, oh, sorry, that was not the right thing, where uh, we're like, Twitter challenges. Mm -hmm. That's and it. This was the the, the microbit virtual parade. Yes. So so yeah, uh, like that that is just wonderful to me. The the community uh, we inspire each other. 
um and uh yeah and yeah what you're saying that you got inspired and you have your students do it, like that to me like that makes it all worth it it's like yes that, that's just uh, the mm. best uh part <clears throat> yeah we Can followed it up can... with a with a showcase outside this was during covid and kids were masked and the kids had to program their their circus train to simply go back and forth two or three feet and as kids walked by, they saw this, this parade of circus trains. It was amazing, amazing. And, and there's something about uh, wonderful when, when the kids uh, are successful. Yes. It's uh, at something like maybe they, they don't know exactly uh, like the coding. Maybe they, they won't remember as well, but they remember they were successful. They had fun and they'll likely try it again. So. I mean, for people who haven't seen the, the frogs, I'm going to get them to do it. It's amazing. Uh, um, so, so for me, the design process, I always make a prototype first, if I have like an idea. So this one was my prototype for the snake. So at this stage, I'm not worried about how it looks like. I'm just testing and you can see right there the coding uh, I, I do that a lot I use the iPad and the hummingbird even if I end up using a different uh, board at the end I always prototype with the hummingbird just because it's so fast and easy um, because I, I can have it uh, uh, like with Bluetooth connect a connection I just press the the, uh, the code and it works so I, I make a prototype then I make uh, sketches thinking of what uh, it'll actually look like. Um, it, so I'm thinking about size and stuff. Uh, and then I make the watercolor um, the uh, pieces if I'm going to use watercolor. And sometimes I, I don't. Um, and then I put it together. So, so, and um, yeah, since the prototype worked, uh, the coding uh, is easier. In, in this case, this project ended up being more than just one um, uh, uh, piece. So, so I also had the hawk, for example. This is me measuring, uh, like trying to make him uh, even. And uh, I'm, uh, I've, I'm very messy. I'm very uh, when sketching, so you'll see uh, um, a lot of this. Like I have paint all over the sketch. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just measuring at this point um, because I went like, okay, so how can I hide the motor? So so that's mainly how how I work. Uh, and then I make the prototypes. Sometimes they work better than others. This was a prototype for the wings. Uh, at this point, I am not using motors. I'm just pulling a string. I'm just testing it out. Uh, I'm like, oh, I, I don't, that, that bit going up didn't work very well. So, um, and then I made a different prototype with the motor. At this point, it's all uh, the size that I want. And then I go, uh, like a paint with the watercolor paintings, if that makes sense. Um, I, I take a lot of, uh, uh, of photos and videos of as I'm working because I, don't, I never know when I want to share something or when I'll have a blooper or something. So, so I, I do that a lot. Uh, hopefully that uh, answered the question. Um, doo -doo -doo. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, and anyway, so so, so yes, I, I stumbled on, up on this uh, career as an educator. I didn't set out to uh, to do this, but uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy making things, and I enjoy seeing what people make, inspired by what I make. It's it's that that is just uh, amazing. I I. Uh, mainly um, for myself, I do, I do a lot of sketching and illustrating. So, so it's, uh, you know, it works, it works. I have like a dual career kind of thing and m mixing them is, uh, it's always a pleasure. Um, let's see, 
Um, <laughs> thank you, Maureen, for, for sharing the, the, the link. Um, um, any other questions? Uh, I don't want Cecilia, to. I am Samuel from Monterrey, Mexico. You hear me? Yeah. Cecilia, Hola. thank you for, for share your passion. It's very wonderful. It's a wonderful activities. I one question: Is the same to inspire to the to the students uh, to inspire to other teachers? Because you detect some some very important for you. You are very good with these activities, but you don't like to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Because when you was a teacher, you need to focus on other academic questions. And this mm -hmm. is, is a creativity, it's a passion, it's a art. When you try to share this idea to other teachers, is the same response like when you teach this to the students? So uh, yes and no. So, so the, the way I've worked with teachers, uh, I always like ask them first, like, what do you want to uh, uh, get the kids to do? What 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 is your goal? Uh, I always, I guess this is the graphic designer in me. I always think of them as my client. I'm like, okay, so what goal do you want the kids to achieve? And uh, then it's like, okay, I can, uh, like with, with Adrian, uh, we were both learning the new things. Uh, she's like, you know what? I trust you. Just show them the the the, the uh, technology. Uh, show them this, and then she takes over. So so it's like a collaboration. Like, okay, so I. I uh, and that happens a lot with with uh, teachers like show them the technology side and they can take over from there they can do the classroom management they can do the curriculum integration um so uh, and like i said teaching is not my passion uh, making stuff is uh, and uh, teaching uh, uh, having Inspiring other uh, the the students and the teachers is also like very rewarding. But um, and and what a, a good teacher can achieve uh, with students is it, always it blows my mind. I, I am always uh, um, in awe of teachers. I I, uh, I have a project in the back. I don't know if you can see it. I have one that is teachers are number one. Uh, somebody like made fun of me like aren't you a teacher I'm like I don't consider myself a teacher I, I, I love teachers I, I think they're amazing I love supporting them that's why I mainly did I was a teacher's assistant and a um, makerspace associate and work with teachers my teaching uh, uh, after school classes and um, summer camps it's, it's just a happenstance honestly for me um, Mm. And yes, I agree. People should check out uh, Jasmine's uh, um, uh, Twitter account. There, there's a wonderful, wonderful community on Twitter. Uh, it, it's, it's funny because a lot of people complain about Twitter, but, but for me, uh, it's very curated, my experience in the, on Twitter. So uh, teachers are always very uh, generous and they always share what they're making and they share what the students are making sure. and it's it's like everyone just keeps feeding off each other and 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 that is wonderful that that's just so amazing what people can do um yeah okay, just curious uh, what kind yes. of projects you're thinking of ahead and and um any kind of plans um Thanks. So I'm currently struggling with a pinball machine project uh, just because I'm being super picky about it. I, because I, I decided to uh, make it a, a theme around a book I love. And uh, I want to have it like so polished and, and like the illustrations perfect. So I, I've been struggling with that one a bit. So, so that has been my, uh, my maker project uh, so far. Um, and uh, <laughs> see, I have the dual thing, uh, just like Jasmine too. Uh, so, so I, I've been, uh, I have a project for illustration that is big. So I've been really um, um, busy with that. So, so I, I grew up reading comic books 
so, uh, so it, like my whole life, uh, like I mentioned my parents, like really supported education and anything that would help our future. So like, you want to read comic books in English? Have at it. So uh, like my, my vocabulary, uh, uh, like my teachers would make fun of me, my English teacher, like you're like a dictionary just because I had uh, so much exposure to, uh, 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 you know, vocabulary. So, so, you know, so I read comics all my life. Uh, and uh, nowadays I read graphic novels. Uh, I, I want to make it like it's a dream to make a graphic novel for myself. So um, I have a, a, a thing going on with uh, with that. So um, so yeah, the my it, it's a problem when when the maker and the illustration side like they have to go like it's, it's a balance that sometimes like it's not very balanced. Like you spend more time with one than the other. So yeah. Uh, funny enough, I've never actually taught just art classes. I, I don't feel like I'm qualified to teach art classes, even though I do a lot of art. Uh, uh, so, you know, like my art side is usually less um, uh, prominent uh, online as my, my uh, maker side. Thanks. Can we just see the inside of one of your sketchbooks? <laughs> uh, sure. I was just, when you were scrolling through the Dropbox, seeing all your sketches of the snakes, they were so beautiful. So I, I, I have a ton of sketchbooks. I, 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 it's one of my addictions. Uh, and I, uh, I just got this one. Uh, so those are my cats. Is that the so, sketch? <laughs> so, so, so so I'll just like go through this really quick. Uh, sometimes I go to aquariums and I uh, do those live. Um, and I, I see little interactions like this kid was playing with a, a, a sea lion. I, I just loved it. So I drew that um, like little characters I have. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> So again, it, uh, I, I sketch all the time, so I have tons of little things and, and uh, usually cute little animals because that's what I also do a lot. Um, so cute. Uh, let's see. I, I, you know, I, 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 I just don't know how much to, to do this. Like I also draw people. Um, so these are amazing <laughs> <laughs> anyway basically <laughs> I, I yeah i have um and this is um i i one one point I, I wanted to make i i color is hard for me like thinking about color so usually my sketchbooks are very rough uh, especially uh younger uh when i was younger and i forced myself to sketch with watercolors to make it easier for me uh, to think about color. So, so um, a, a lot of my sketchbooks are just black and white, just sketches, but this this happened to be one of them, my more finished ones because it's like practicing watercolor, so. Okay, thanks so much for sharing all this beautiful work. Um, your presentation is amazing. Everybody here is all <laughs> like this. So um, I I just want to 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 you many times you, you said, oh, I don't like teaching. I don't like teaching. I want to, to do things. But uh, as a matter of fact, you don't like teaching like the old way, like the, the way that it's it's actually it happens, but it shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. uh, as educators, we should inspire the, the kids, or the students to, to do that. Mm -hmm. they, they should feel our passion and want to do, oh, I want to do that too. I want to do like that. Mm -hmm. That's the real teacher. I think I would <laughs> like to make this observation. As a matter of fact, you are a great teacher in the good sense of the word. 
because you inspire and, and you make that not only inspire they do things you make the children do that mm -hmm. so that's that's perfect thank you uh, I mean, uh, maybe maybe the, the the concept of the, the of what teacher is 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 it's it's but, wrong. Yeah, I, I mean, shouldn't be right. like that. Yeah, I totally agree that the, the a class a teacher would be like you to to mm. inspire teachers and to invite them to the knowledge, to the experience, to the full stuff, not only taking books and do like this. With, Mm -hmm. That's our uh, uh, what we fight for. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Anders, do you agree? <laughs> yes. What 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 do you think? Yes, teaching has come a long way. Sorry, yeah, teaching has come a long way, and the 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 idea of being sage on the stage is gone sharing your passions, approaching teaching in different, many different ways is the new way of teaching. So locked into the old ways really doesn't exist anymore. You know, teachers have to let go, let kids be creative. And that's, that's becoming more of the, the way teaching is moving. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I mean, the way I grew up, um... You know, teachers would open the book, um, mm -hmm. read the book, and you were supposed to write everything that they were saying. So dictation was horrid. I, I never did that. I would draw while people, uh, while the teachers were <laughs> uh, uh, reading the book. Because I'm like, why would I want to write what it says in the book? Right. I can just <laughs> read the book. But right. uh, Anyway, I was a bit of a rebel at school, <laughs> so maybe that's why I never thought of myself as uh, saw myself as a teacher because I, I, I thought that was boring and I would see my classmates being awful and like why would I want that? But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's it's a it, it's so amazing seeing what the kids can can do. It's just mind blowing. Like wow, yeah. I was a I was a science teacher for ten years. And moving to a hands-on format was difficult because teachers have to let go of that control for a while. And then when I moved into teaching robotics and engineering, I had to let go even more because I put the responsibility on the students. And most students adapt well. Most students embrace being able to do their own thing, follow their own ideas. So I, I think you would be well suited in the classroom. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I keep teaching classes for like summer camp and all that. So, so it's always fun. It's, uh, I'm, always guessing that students, I'm guessing that students respond well to your summer classes. Yeah, they, they do. I mean, I, I showed some of the work yes. they did and uh, I don't think I showed this um, one student, he he was older. He was like 14, 15, which is for for uh, my usual uh, age group. He was older, and uh, he made this beautiful dragon. I, I don't know if I can grab it. Um, but where is it? There we go. Mm -mm, okay. So he made this, and uh, he was cutting all these little pieces of cardboard to give the dragon volume and um wow and just uh, the wings and he knew exactly the movement he wanted to do wow and he had never done done any robotics or anything like that and so uh, he he asked me uh, questions like how can i achieve this i told him and uh he, he was so grateful because he had not done electronics and he had a very clear idea of what he wanted to do. He, he reminded me of myself, like you have the idea of what you want and you somehow make it work. And uh, yeah, he, he uh, really liked his sort of like uh, projects from students. But, but yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to see uh, people, the, the, the students who you wouldn't think would be into, um, electronics really responding to the art side is uh, this um, 
this summer I'm doing a, a lip syncing uh, robots, which I hadn't done before. And uh, I think the classes already sold out. So, so I, I'm excited about that because it, it's just so amusing, I, I think, <laughs> like having the robots talk and, and like thinking of, of these kids who are really into TikTok and all those things. And then suddenly they can make something that's silly that they can make videos with. Uh, I, I don't know, it's uh, kind of amazing. Uh, but I, I want to see what these kids will do in the future. Honestly. This is what I mainly use. Um, so this is a hummingbird uh, bit, but I use a lot of different um, um boards that use the micro bit this this is the important thing the micro bit because i i have tested almost all of them so if you ever have questions i almost did a review video but people got a little too nitpicky about stuff so i'm like okay i'm i'm not doing that so anyway so this one is a micro bit let's see uh micro bit in the, in the back and this one is hummingbird. Hummingbird is what I use with my students. Mm -hmm. They're not the cheapest, but no. I find that they're the easiest <laughs> and the, the most friendly. Um, yeah, with compared to a lot of platforms out there, it's they're fairly reasonable. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> they come in kits. Yes. Uh, so then they have classroom kits, and and, uh, and they're uh, uh, one of the biggest advantages of the hummingbird over other companies. I find is that they have an emphasis on uh, having educational resources. Mm -hmm. So they're very friendly for towards teachers. They have a lot of tutorials. They they uh, they make sure that the community is engaged. Uh, so I've tried almost all the boards, and and they uh, the, like this. The, the company really cares about ed educators. So that, this is why I mainly well, and because you can prototype super easily with them. That's why I use them. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much to everybody. It, thank you so much, Cecilia. It's wonderful. Congratulations for <laughs> You're bye welcome. Bye. Thanks. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.